Welcome back. Wolves and lions. Alright. First of all, come on over to this other YouTube channel I have. Because if you're interested in the stock market, which you should be, um, I post the economic and stock market videos and for metals on this channel first. And then I post them whenever I have time on the on the other Wolfpack Cryptos channel, right? So sometimes, so if it's stock market related and metals, I posted, I post those videos on the MMG Invest channel and sometimes it's two days prior to me posting it on the other channel because it takes hours to upload videos and I don't always have the time to do that. But, um... And then the crypto videos, I post those on the Wolfpack Crypto channel, and those usually go up a day or two prior to me posting it on the MMG Invest channel. So, you have to be in both. If you're interested in more than just crypto, or if you're interested in more than just economics, stock market, and metals. And plus, it helps me out. I, I want to get this channel to a thousand. All right. First of all, this is not financial advice. I'm not your licensed financial advisor. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Stock market, it's the stock market, economy, and uh, shares of company stocks are extremely volatile, extremely risky. Do not invest anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. Have your stops in place. Emotions out. All right. I'm gonna do a quick um, just update. So the S&P 500, this is a monthly, monthly chart. It's on a six count. So I am expecting seven, eight, nine more months of upside. So three to four more months of upside. Now, if you guys remember, you have to keep this in mind. When I say something, I'm trying to predict the future, meaning it's forward looking. So, weeks ago or months ago, I started talking about a stock market melt-up. Here we go. Stock market melt-up. This was two months ago. And so far, that is exactly what is happening. We're hitting all-time highs again. And I said in this video two months ago, the reason this will happen is, is because of the Fed. And it, it might end up, the U.S. stock market might end up like Venezuela's, right? It'll just keep going higher and higher as uh, the real economy and inflation, uh, well, the real economy starts deteriorating and real inflation really starts picking up. So I, you know, I this was my first video where I started warning you guys two months ago or over two months ago that this was going to happen and fast forward to today. It's happening. So here's S and P 500. I expect a seven, eight, nine count to play out on the monthly, and that could take us to 3,300 on the S and P 500 easily. Uh, so we'll end this year with probably higher, well, hitting new all-time highs. If we go to the weekly chart on the S and P. It's on a five count. So the weekly still has six, seven, eight, nine, at least a month to go higher, according to the TD indicator, sequential. And it's been very, very accurate. I would give it about a 70% accuracy, 60. It also takes some skills to know when to use the TD or to actually take it seriously. Here's a daily chart. Daily's on a two count. It is coming up on a 13 cell. Because there's two counts. There's one in the background. And that might cause a little dip. Uh, and I expect that dip to happen right after the FOMC on the 27th of this month, July. Because they're gonna they're gonna cut rates, and when they do, it it'll probably end up being a 
buy the rumor, sell the fact type of event. So it actually, the market might start falling a few days prior to the Fed meeting where they will cut rates or it'll do it right after, you know, so keep that in mind. We'll get a dip, some sort of pullback, nothing serious, not a crash or anything. I still think this stock market's going to melt up for the rest of this year. Next year, that's a different story. It's a little too far into the future for me to talk about that right now. Here's the Russell 2000. Now, everything else is hitting all-time highs. Meanwhile, the Russell 2000 is not. The Russell 2000 uh, gauges the economy much better for the U.S. than uh, any of the other markets, in my opinion, because it tracks mid-size uh, smaller companies in the U.S., which are the backbone of the economy. No, it's not these 500 fortune companies. The mid-sized companies are the ones that hire more people, actually produce things in real life, and blah, blah, blah. And they're not international. You have to understand that. Every 500 fortune company isn't really an American company anymore. It's an international company. They are ever, they're all around the world. All right? Like, a good example would be Apple. It's, Apple is an international company. It doesn't even bring money back to the U.S. It like keeps it on offshore uh, shell corps, and uh, that's why they don't pay taxes. And they have stores all around the world, and their manufacturing base is literally in China. They're, and they're, didn't they move their headquarters there as well? I'm not even sure. Just to avoid taxes, because in China you don't even have to. Corporations and companies don't even have to pay taxes. China's technically. More free market than the U.S. And um, that's why China is going to be the next superpower within probably I probably within the next 5, 10 years. Easily. All right. Fang stocks. <clears throat> Fang stocks, they, um, they help push up the broader indices like the 500, like NASDAQ, uh, S&P 500. Um, they're breaking out so the fang stocks are breaking out major resistance here's my blue line this is a daily chart of the fang index and uh it's breaking to the upside so i do expect um this is why i think the rest of this year the stock market's probably going to do fairly well and keep hitting new all-time highs uh here's uh light crude oil it's at 60 bucks it did go up in the past week or so because of the weak dollar. Oil is extreme. It's, it's not my thing. Because it's. Look how volatile it is. People just get wrecked in oil. Um, and geopolitics matter. You know. There's a lot of manipulation from governments and oil. I, that's why I don't like it. Um, it's funny. Because mainstream media will blame speculators. And the free market. When it's really. It's government policies. And geopolitical warfare. Uh, because of the petrodollar, right? Because the dollar is technically pegged to Saudi oil. All right, so I don't know. Right now, I don't. I don't know about oil. It might consolidate a little bit more, and then it'll probably go higher. I think oil has bottomed, and it's only going to go back up for the U.S. Here, here's the Nasdaq daily chart. It's breaking out. I mean, this pretty Nasdaq pretty much follows S and P five hundred. Yeah, it's pretty much it. All right. Um, I just want to show you guys one more thing about the S and P five hundred. Let's go back to a monthly chart. Monthly was on a six count. Remember. So possible nine counts of the upside on the S&P 500. Let me zoom out. What does that look like? <laughs> look at this. This is the S&P 500 since 1971, since the gold standard was taken off and the central banks can manipulate interest rates and cause a debt-driven stock market bubble. Look at this. What is this starting to look like, guys? I'll give it... I wish I had that chart I was looking at the other day. 
let me do a comparison I'll just add symbol and uh, it looks like uh, in my opinion it looks a lot like Bitcoin in 2017 I have to play around with this to make it fit let's make this uh, candles So, ignore this, right? This is current. This is the current pump, which is ridiculous on Bitcoin, which is going to, in my opinion, crash. Uh, go to Wolfpack Cryptos if you want to know about cryptos. All right. So, but this was the 2017 uh, bubble in uh, cryptocurrencies, right? If you look at it, the, the bottom candles, guys, don't look at the top candles. I know this is confusing. Um, but look at this. It goes parabolic. If I go down onto a daily chart, it's easier to see on Bitcoin what it looked like. There we go. So this is Bitcoin, right? Look how parabolic it looks. And if I zoom out, since 1971, it's looking very parabolic now, the S&P 500. It's starting to go 90 degree angle since we broke out last week to new all time highs. And it could go up more, right? It could go up, who knows? Go to 42, go to 50, 50 <laughs> you go to 50, 5,000, S&P 500, right? I don't care because metals are going to go even higher and you have to account for inflation as the stock market when you sell your stock shares you're not discounting the inflation because that's why that your shares are going so high now even if I put this if I put it on a logarithmic chart it looks different right I get it but it still looks stupid <laughs> still looks parabolic here, here's a logarithmic chart of the S&P 500 on the monthly. It's still overdue for a correction. I don't care how you, if you put it on a logarithmic. I'm just telling you guys in the long term. I don't know when it's going to crash. It could crash next week. It could crash three years from now. It could crash five years from now. I don't know. I don't know what extent they can manipulate this. All right. That's pretty much what I'm saying. But this is starting to look really, really parabolic. <laughs> All right, I just want to show you that. All right, let's talk about, let's look at gold and then we'll look at bond yields. So a few weeks ago, I bought in a leveraged 300X gold ETF. It's been doing great, real good, <laughs> real great. I bought it down here and uh, the ETFs have been just exploding. The, the gold and silver mining ETFs, even though silver hasn't really moved up. Uh, here's gold. Gold is on a seven count on the weekly, so maybe two more weeks of upside and then a pullback. I prefer gold stay above 1400 and go a little bit higher, maybe 1460, and then we get a pullback to test 1400, and that pretty much confirms. Like I'm a hundred percent sure we're in a bull market at that point. Right now I'm in like right now I think it's like a ninety to eighty percent. I'm certain we're in a bull market. All right, but I'm I'm fairly certain because I'm going all in at this point. Oh yeah, promo code ten percent off for MMG Invest for my mining stock research, which is doing pretty well. Personally, a few of them have gone up hundreds of percent already. Uh, ten percent off for that. The uh, uh the promo lo the promo code will be in the comment section, and I'll pin it to the top. I'm gonna extend this discount because a lot of people are buying, and I need more money to buy more mining stocks. <clears throat> so the weekly is on a seven. Let's go to a monthly real quick for gold. It's on a two count. So this is why I'm not like a hundred percent certain yet, but I'm pretty damn certain. I need. 
this to be a three count to the upside on the monthly. So if gold could just run to 1500 on next month, not, not July, not this month, but August, right? If it could run up to 1500 by August, and it probably will because the Fed will will cut rates in July 27th. So then we have a three count, three green candles. We already have three green candles, but we'll get a three count on the TD sequential, which will set us up for nine months to the upside, right? So then we would have six more months to the upside going into 2020 before a significant correction on the monthly time frame all right and that's what i just want to show you guys the daily it's consolidating right now we have a nice little wedge here on gold and uh yeah i mean it's just it's not even a wedge it's just a triangle and uh, we'll see if it breaks out. I'm assuming it's going to break to the upside as of right now. What else? Silver. I showed you guys in the last video the gold and silver ratio. The last, my last video was very good. You should watch that if you missed it. Listen, once silver gets above, this is a weekly chart of silver, silver futures. Once silver gets above my blue line here, or even the 200-week moving average, so if we could get above 1650 and especially above 17 1650 to 17 bucks if it get if it get past that range right $17 to 1650 and break $17 an ounce it's game over they cannot stop the bull market in precious metals but so far silver has been lagging and eventually it's going to break out and when that happens it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild ride to the upside all right yields so if you watch this here's a 19 here's 2009 mortgage-backed security crisis it's uh i've shown you guys this a hundred times it's um that's the shaded area the yellow line is time and uh you just go to gurufocus.com yield curve and you could play with this so here's the yield curve on the left we're coming up on 2019, and here's the yield curve. The low interest rates, the long-term interest rates, right? And now we're boom. So let me rewind. I can't catch it, but for... You can see the short-term interest rates rose above the long-term. But overall, this entire line was down here. It started down here. That was the beginning of the bull market, right? In the 2000s. Although that bull market wasn't that great. Oh, no. I'm looking at the 90s. That's why it looked weird. All right. Hold on. This is what it, the yield curve looked like right before 2009, 2007. This is right before the, the, the uh, Great Recession. Look at this. The long-term yield versus the short-term yield. But before the recession, it inverted in 2007. So where are we right now? Uh, this is 2010. 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 2015, 16, 17, 2018, it's inverting, 2019, it's inverted. So the yield curve is inverted. Now the long-term yield is rise, well, it's, it ha it's steepening. What I'm trying to say is when the stock market crashes, people go into bonds and that pushes up uh, short term interest rates. Uh, that's the free market acting. 
and then the Federal Reserve tries to artificially drop the short-term interest rate to stop the market from crashing and the, the debt coming due. Because as interest rates rise, people default on all their debts, public and private. Does that make sense? So right now it's inverted. There's a there's like once it inverts, it could give you six months to like eighteen months, something crazy like that, before the stock market really like crashes. But this time around, what people aren't anticipating on is the bond market crashing because the debt is so great that the U.S. can't pay it off and they can't do anything besides print money. So in the end, the only buyer is going to be the Federal Reserve. And when the, only, when the only buyer is the Fed, you get hyperinflation. That's what people don't get. All right, so that's pretty much it for now. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember 10% discount. Uh, it ends next Sunday, so you have a week. And then uh, go to MMG Invest. Leave anything in the comment section, I do answer, and then smash them likes, share my videos. It's the only way my channel grows, and I'll keep doing this. And uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, do all that. I'll see you guys in the free chat rooms below the video, because for some reason people are, are stupid. They, they put in the comment section, how do I join this? How do I join that? For one, I have a banner across the top with the with the URLs, which are short URLs. Then below the video, there's a description section where there's links to all the chat groups that are free and then links to the websites where you could go and join the private group where you get research on, on you know, mining stocks. There's one for cryptos as well. Until next time, guys.